I came for the fishing, you know? And then all the other stuff that you find along the way just makes it that much better. I, literally, it's just like treasure around every corner. You don't know what you're gonna find. Yes. And when you do, yes. no way. well, no way. it makes it all worth it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Algonquin Park. Uh, this is my first time back in a year and a half. Um, last time I was here I did the big trout loop and the focus on that trip was to try to capture a moose on film and get some photographs, which thankfully I did in the first day. Um, this trip, however, is going to be a much different trip. I am focusing on fishing. Uh, trout opener is tomorrow morning, so hopefully I'll be the first one on the lake and we'll be chasing after Algonquin's finest brook trail. Fortunately, I can't fish today because there is fish sanctuary in Algonquin until tomorrow, but we are off to a brook trout lake and hopefully first thing tomorrow morning we'll have a fish on the end of the line. Um, this will be the first big trip in the Esquite Adirondack. I'm excited to see how it pans out. Uh, getting it organized this morning was a little difficult just because, as I said in the past video, it's a little limited on space. So we're trying to figure it out how to make it work. But I think I've got it dialed at this point. I'm sure I'll make the adjustments along the way. But we have a big portage today, so I'm very grateful that I've got this canoe instead of the old one. Anyways, before the portage today, we uh, are gonna see some pictographs, I think. It's marked on the map that they're up here around the corner. So I'm gonna head over there and we'll go check them out. All right, so I've been exploring this cliff face, looking for the pictographs, and I found a few so far. The most evident one was when it almost looked like a turtle, and then uh, there's a few other markings. I had a hard time seeing what it was actually a symbol of, but it's super cool to see. Um, this whole cliff face is beautiful. I'm in this little like cove in here. There's like a small cave in behind me there, but um, yeah, and seeing some otters. They were uh, popping in and out of the water. And then, uh, unfortunately, I'm on a lake that still has boat access. So a boat was in the background, but super cool to start to this trip. Anyways, I'm gonna see if there's any more pictographs and then I'm gonna get on my way because we gotta get that big portage out of the way.
All right, there was the first portage. Nothing serious, just a 400 meter around a, a waterfall there. But uh, it's a warm up for what's to come because I got a doozy of a portage to uh, handle here this afternoon. But now I've got to cross this lake and unfortunately I've got a headwind. So it could take me a bit longer than I would hope. Anyways, I'm gonna stick to paddling and uh, continue on. Oh shit, oh shit, that was not it. Well, just made it through the little 300 meter portage and now I'm gonna short paddle until I get to the two kilometer portage. I just uh, met a couple of people that are coming to the same lake. They uh, actually come fishing here every year and well, they catch fish, so that's a positive. I'm not I'm going on a wild goose chase. Well, maybe I am. But I think I'm going the right way. Right now, I feel like I'm fucked. Oh, 
Oh yeah, that's a good one. Right in my foot. <sighs> Boot or shoe, whatever. Oh. How you doing? That hurts. Well, we made it through the big portage. Um, this canoe is like is total game changer. Last year I did, or not last year, a year and a half ago, I did the big trout loop. And in that one there was a 2.3 or 2.4 kilometer portage. And it absolutely destroyed me. I had to triple carry, because I couldn't carry my bag with my canoe. I just couldn't handle it. Um, and this time around, I just did a double carry and I was able to do it in like two sections. I usually stop halfway and go back, grab the canoe, kind of split it up a bit. Sometimes I have to do more because well, that old canoe. Oh, that's a lot of wind. Would kick my ass. Anyways, I'm going to get myself to camp here and out of this wind because this is a big lake. Well guys, I have finally made it to my campsite. I ended up on this uh, beautiful beach actually, which is pretty sweet. I don't think I've had a campsite quite like this before. But yeah, I chose this site just because it's on the opposite end of the lake. I actually want to head that way tomorrow, but I thought it'd be best if I just packed up all my gear and started heading that way. I could fish the lake as I went and I uh, didn't have to backtrack in the morning. But yeah, I have done an absolute horrible job of narrating today, so it's honestly been ridiculous. I haven't really had much time to even focus on filming. I've just been trying to get here and I just kept making minor mistakes that made my day a little bit longer. Starting with that marsh that I was walking through barefoot. Yeah, didn't need to do it. If I just put it a little bit farther, there was a creek that went straight up to the portage. So after I did that, cut my feet up and uh, was pretty dang cold. I uh, did the portage, got to the other side, and hopped into the water, and I was in some current. So I was just focused on paddling through that current. And I went to the left, because that's where the current was coming from. Turns out, I should have went to the right, that I didn't actually notice. And uh, I ended up down this little beaver creek, and I kept pushing my way, even though it felt wrong. I thought, you know what, I'm going to make it. And I looked at my map, and it looked like this creek would actually get me kind of farther ahead and I could tie myself back into the portage. No, I did a bunch of bushwhacking to try to locate portage, the portage. I did a bunch of bushwhacking to try to locate that portage and 
it was nowhere to be found. I had to turn back around, start over, and that is when I finally located the two kilometer portage that I needed to get across. So needless to say, I am pretty much exhausted at this point. Um, I honestly just need to get some more water into me, cook myself some dinner, and uh, get ready for bed. Because I need to get refreshed so I can enjoy a day of fishing tomorrow. Because that is what we're after. Hopefully we can catch a brook trout. That's the goal of this whole trip. If I catch one brook trout, I'll be a happy man. Anyways, I'm going to get camp set up and uh, then we'll make dinner. All right, guys, that is it for day one of this trip. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm feeling it right now. I'm definitely not used to using these muscles. Uh, total different muscle group you use when you're paddling and uh, carrying all that gear off of your back. But I got to say, the canoe is going to save my life in trips like these. Um, I couldn't imagine how I would feel right now if I was still using the Red Beast. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, I've got my rods rigged up for tomorrow morning. Right now, I see fish actually coming to the surface. So hopefully, that's a sign of good things to come. But for now, I'm going to hang out by the fire, dry off my boots, and uh, 
get some shut eye. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, just keep going, one day at a time.